one of the greatest guys I've been blessed to be friends with. Stand up comedian, podcaster, actor, and all around life coach when it comes to the man, Burt Kreischer, Joey Diaz. Yeah, I'm 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 really fucking sore. Yeah, your body hurts. Well, congratulations, you did it. You Thank went down you. there, fucking drunk from the night before. You yeah. didn't give a fuck, Jack. <laughs> Chest infection. <laughs> I, dude, I had a, I was coughing so bad the night before. Now, had you run it all? No. Did you train? I mean, yeah, but like the whole thing was like that. I said, I said, had said to Ari and Joe and Tom that I was in shape that I run. You know them. They're like, first of all, they love breaking my balls. But then they're like, you're not really running. You're not really running. I was like, no, I run on the treadmill. And they're like, that's not really running. So I just did that. I did what I normally do, like just walk on the treadmill and run. But I'd never, and I'd run a half marathon before, but I'd never, uh, I wouldn't, didn't do like the marathon plan. Like you get, you're supposed to do like a plan where you. Yeah. You start eight weeks before. And yeah. Yeah. There's these people that do age runs. Yeah. They do age runs, and you go over there and you sign up, and it's like Sundays and Thursdays at the Pasadena Orange Bowl. Yeah, and they start from you from scratch, stretches, and then they give you homework. Yeah, they give you homework to do, and that, but at least you're with a coach, somebody who, you know, the night before tell you to eat two pounds of pasta, whatever the fuck they do, red beans and rice. They eat a bunch of carbs the night before, not fucking drink Tito's vodka. You know, that's not carburation. You know what I'm saying? That don't help the car. I guess like, so. I guess there would have been so many other aspects to this that oh, you yeah. should have done. With I looked other at people. the training last night. I was in bed and I was looking at what the training program was, and it's it's it does make sense. I'll, I'll be very honest. How many there's, miles a week? Like something? Because I asked somebody me like what the training thing is. Oh, like they, they do. talk about miles a week. Like <clears throat> excuse me, like fifty miles a week. Are you fucking crazy? Yeah. Are you fucking crazy? Like 50 miles, something. There's oh, yeah. No, it's, it's about 50 miles a week. I remember logging into the thing that I had run, that I would run like 20 miles a week, which is, by the way, that's a, an overstatement, like that I'd run 20 miles a week. And these guys are putting in, they do uh, four mile runs almost every day. And then on Sunday, they were doing, like they have a day off. They take a day off, which I don't, I don't my days off are like the days I travel. And then they do a long, slow distance run. So like they do... 15 miles but just do 15 miles for the day and those runs i cannot do like i don't have i can't get out and run for two hours on the streets on a sunday like i can come up in here in the man cave pour a cocktail put on fucking guys grocery games or guys fieri and walk and jog yeah, i can do that easy same. it's not the same it's not the same it's funny when i got out of the prison at the halfway house I would go to work at 10. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? I rented a garage. I had a garage before I got locked up that I rented for 35 bucks and I had a punching bag and just metal weights and cement yeah. weights and shit. And I'd bench press and do bent over rows. And one day somebody said, you ever try running? When I got locked up, you got to run. When you get locked up, you got to move. Yeah. So I would run around the track, but you know, with Converse on and shit. And then when I got to Boulder, I started running on the creek in the mornings, like at 7.30, I'd do like two miles, three miles. Yeah. And then I started getting heels, spurs. Oh. And, I, and on Monday nights at the Harvest Restaurant in those days, upstairs was a sneaker store. And this running specialist would come. This was Boulder. 20 years ago, Boulder was a very fit city. Yeah, it still is. It's still like people do moonlight walks and shit, you know. It's fucking crazy. Like when you look at activities, yeah, their list of activities is completely different than any other cities. But they're all, but I got these spurs in my heel, and my heel. Yeah. And the doctor's like, that's from running like a gorilla. You got to learn how to run. So I went to his office. He shot cortisone in there. You have no fucking idea. I wouldn't do the cortisone. This is when I wasn't a needle guy at all. Yeah. And he shot the cortisone in both <laughs> heels, and they wouldn't let me off the table. They're like, your skin color just disappeared. No really? days. I didn't deal with needles well. Like, in those days, there wasn't a needle in my life for 10 years at one time. Like, now I forced myself yeah. to go to acupuncture and to the doctor to draw blood. But back then, there was no needles in my world. And fucking, that was the biggest pain ever when he shot me into the bursar 
and squoze the fucking syringe with cortisone. And I would have to wear orthotics and they didn't let me run for six weeks. But it, when I lived in Boulder, I, I used to swim in the master swimming program. Yeah. And she was uh, one of those chicks that did the Hawaiian thing. The Iron Man. Iron Man. Yeah. So her name was Jane. She would coach and she would come talk and she talked me into doing a bye thing. I didn't, I wasn't a big runner. Yeah. If I smoke a joint and I'm in running shape, I'll go for a run, but not on concrete. Really? Yeah, I did too much of that. And today at 55, I feel it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I go to North Hollywood Park and run around that dirt till your dick falls off. I love that. I love North Hollywood Park. It's great. Park. That's a great little park. That's a great loop. That's and a great you can loop. run. you can run through the center of it, through the trees. Yeah, no, it's a great little park if you really want to get in shape. Dave, have you seen those guys that work out there in the morning? Oh, yeah. There's like like eight white guys and like six black dudes. And that's all they do is that bar work out there. I can't even do one pull up. Some of those guys, I see the guy they're with the, shredded. the roller thing. Shredded. St- oh, dude, those guys. Shredded. Yeah, they're doing those like uh, those like New York, Brooklyn work, Harlem workouts on the on the prison workouts. Yeah, brother. prison workouts. Dude, those are those guys are impressive. Yeah, fucking pull ups, yeah. push ups, squats. I started running on treadmills because I was getting heel spurs. I had heel spurs. Uh, Probably maybe like four years ago, I had them real bad, and I went to and get rolfed. You know what rolfing is? Yeah, when they put the knuckles in there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You're screaming, you're tapping. Dude. I can't wear party shoes. I, oh. I like suits. Yeah, I'm 55 years old and I dress like a 16 year old. It's not because I want to. Yeah, it's because I can't wear party shoes. I I I, can't fl- not- I can wear flip flops, but I can't wear sneakers that don't have inserts in them. Yeah, I put inserts in mine. Yeah, I have like extra inserts. I can't wear boots. I used to love wearing boots. Yeah, no, no, those Dude. days are done. Those cowboy boots, rugged. No, 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 no. That's what one of the things That's, that those things will kill you. One of the reasons, like, and I, I, you know, I told I told Ari Joe and Tom that I was like, I could do it easy with no training. I could just get into a marathon. I think you don't smoke. No. So it's not, you know, you're not a heavy yeah. smoker or nothing like that. So if you would have just trained a little bit, you wouldn't have worried me as much. Well, just that little training. At mile 20, I went, oh, here's why people train. Because I was like, at mile 20, it was, like, it was like we all got infected with the disease and it showed up at the exact same time. That's when they say you hit the wall. And Joey, people were dropping down, collapsing on the ground, falling onto the sidewalk, your legs just start spasming like your your calves your th- quads and there's this guy i'd heard um i'd heard him on rogan david gogan's and he was like he was like embrace the suck and you think of cameron haynes like always keep hammering and all i thought was oh yeah but you can't hammer through this like this is your legs no longer work so in my head i was like all right just slow down that's when i was like all right if you're gonna need to walk a little bit now's when you walk but i was like Oh, the training is for these moments so that your legs work for the 26 miles. And then the other thing I was thinking was like, like at one point I was like, oh, this is how you end up getting heel spurs again. Like by going out and doing it hard like this. I think I dodged that. My feet feel fine. My feet feel You amazing. wore good running sneakers. What? I, yeah, I, ran, I got, I used the ones that I'd, I'd got, I did that half marathon and then I got new shoes. And so these were the ones that I got back then. But, um. We yeah, have for like for like in all in all honesty for like sixteen miles I was I was felt great for sixteen miles I was like I was like there's I got this seventeen miles I was seventeen miles I got in my head it was the first time I got in my head where I was like I was like I have nine more miles to do like I, I don't normally run nine miles at all let alone nine miles after seventeen miles and then eighteen was going uphill I, I can tell you right now eighteen was going uphill and 20 it started uphill until 23 and I, at 20 is when i was like i was like i'm not, i know i'm not giving up i'm not gonna quit but i was like okay this is what this is what's hard about a marathon at mile 20 that's when you're like oh this is a fucking beast 30 miles was i ran it's basically running dodger stadium to the comedy store i don't mean to i don't mean to sound callous but like cakewalk like cakewalk Super easy, ran it super easy at the pace I ran my half marathon. 16 miles, I was like, yeah, 16, 13 miles, it's all downhill to 16 miles. So you're literally flying, Joe. Why you're running you from the. It, why don't you take it up now? What? Take up running. I am. Oh, I'm going to. Take up running, get yourself a little coach. Yesterday I said to myself, sprints. I was like, I was like, I'm going to. I'm. We don't want to end up like Ralphie's comics, man. Yeah. And that, I like your treadmill. There's a purpose for that, but you don't need that purpose. Yeah. You know, the whole thing about running is it's fucking 70 degrees in California today. 
You could drive to a fucking North Hollywood Park, stretch out. I used to love getting a kettlebell and going to NoHo. When I weighed 350 fucking pounds, yeah. I would take my shirt off, go to North Hollywood Park, and get by a tree when it was really hot. Yeah. And I would do the the fucking swings yeah. in the sun, but it would cool off under the tree. And there's no better suntan lotion than your own fucking sweat. No. I would leave there dark, like, Jesus Christ. Like, you go at 2.30, yeah. 1 o'clock around that. You know, we live in California to be outside. Yeah. And the, I think the endorphins and all that. When Lee would tell me that he'd do the Stairmaster and watch a movie, it would piss me off. Because that's not what that's for. Yeah. It's not what it's for. It's but it makes it easy for a guy like Lee or like myself. Yeah, but no, no, no. You're doing this to to get away for an hour. That it's, escape, that two hits off a joint, that's, that's really that's good. so brilliant that you say and that. get on a fucking thing and put your earphones on and leave the fucking phone at home. Dude, the I said. The kids are in school. You're around the corner from the school if anything happens anyway. You go to that no-ho. You walk one lap and then you run. And then, you know, and, and then you'll see other people and they're like, hey, and next thing you know, you got three fucking fags running together three days a week. Yeah. You got like an old guy that's 60 and a black dude that's like, because I put it on looking for you. <coughs> I actually put on the marathon looking for you and it was three black dudes. Oh. And I'm like, what the fuck is Bert? <laughs> and then I found that there's like another race. But you ain't beating us three black dudes. Like no. those three black dudes, 20 miles for them, they've been doing that all their life. They've been chasing fucking zebras and shit and getting chased by lions for 20 oh. miles. Those black dudes, they ain't going to do nothing. Like, you ain't going to touch them in that race. I thought about like, that the yesterday. The Nigerian dudes, yeah. they're from, because it's the elevation. Somewhere in Africa, the guy was saying, you see these three dudes here? They wiped their ass with 26 miles because where they live, the elevation was so high that they, they do this and that and that elevation. Yeah. In L.A., with the pollution, you can shoot pollution in their face. And these three fucking little African dudes will run from here to fucking Thousand Oaks and back. Yeah. But then I found, I saw the other race. And I saw regular people. I saw some fat chick. Dude, there well, were a lot there was of fat, a lot people, of fat people there. Though. There was a lot. Like, just killing your body into shock. I, what's so depressing is when you would... Bust in varicose veins and shit. You'd run... Varicose vein juice <laughs> by the 16th mile. And they think it was cute. Like, I'm 300 pounds. Let me go down there. And the effort is, you know... The spirit is willing, yeah, but the flesh is much too much. Like you just can't. I saw some fat lady, and she was tapping out. Like oh, at ten miles. She a was lot like, of that. yeah, she was tapping out. <coughs> I would, dog. I'm a fat fuck. There's no way I would try to walk that. Just out of general, I know I wouldn't be able to do anything the rest of the week. Oh, I saw a woman shit her pants. Yeah, shit her pants in front of me, and I, I was like, I was like, whoa, this is that's a this is like a. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming she looked like a, a wealthy white woman, but she got to like you would never. My wife would never shit her pants with people. She shit her pants and just kept going. And I was like, I was like, this is fucking real. The worst is when you see an overweight person in front of you, and you're like, how the fuck are they doing this, dude? I got beat. I got beat by a disabled guy, like a guy with full blown C cerebral palsy on the right side of his body. Him and his dad were running it like savages, Joey. Like. Just and I was looking at him and he was in pain and he was like, "No, fuck this." And then you look at him and you're like, "Oh my god, man, start running!" It's what very the inspiring, dude. It is. It what you said is so brilliant because I, all my, my all my running's done on a treadmill. That's all I do, and and it's it's the it's it's how I, you know it's like and I'm like Lee. I get up, I watch TV, I get on the treadmill, watch maybe football or I watch like guys' no, grocery games. No, no, that's not it. But when I did the race yesterday, I was there was a point when I was running and I was going through downtown, and it was like three miles in, and I was like, oh, "This is my city. I live in this city, but I've never seen this city this way." Like running through Chinatown, running through downtown by the Disney building, running through Echo Park and Silver Lake. And then running down Hollywood, and then running down the hills, and going up up San Vicente, and you're just like, wow, this is cool. When I got to the place where I hit the ocean, where you come down and you hit the ocean, and you're about done, you're like half a mile left. It was like a religious experience, and I thought, I thought to myself, I wonder if I had done all this road work, if I'd been running on the road this time and gone exploring little places in the city. I bet this would have been a lot more fucking fun. And your brain is forced when you're not watching a TV. And you're just doing a repetitive thing, 
Man, I your brain is what needs the exercise. I man, I have Joey. I've never. Yeah, that, that's crazy. When I go to yeah. jujitsu, I leave my phone in the car. When I go to strength and conditioning, I leave my phone in the car. I'm just a fat fuck in the back of the class. Yeah, and it's one hour that you're nobody. You're nobody. You're just a zero. You're just a regular human being trying to get in shape. And when you walk out, that's why when I walk out of that conditioning class at ten fifteen. I got the world by the balls three days a week because yeah. I did the hardest thing I'm going to do. I got to go podcast. Yeah. Go get on stage in front of 16 people. <laughs> that's nothing. But that hour for the mind, that's what I didn't do when I first moved here. It was all comedy. Yeah. That's why I blew up to 400 pounds because all we did was get coffee and talk with other comedians about things you're not going to even do. You know, now you're like, you watch a guy like Rogan. Who, when you go on, like, I used to go on the road with Rogan, and he'd fucking work out. That seemed, like, unreal to me. Really? Like, I just did 45 on the Stairmaster. What? What are you talking about? Like, we're on the road. Yeah. And then I realized, sometimes now, by 4 o'clock on a fucking Saturday, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go do the elliptical and just throw some dumbbells around, because that's all there is in the hotel. Yeah. But it's better than sitting in this room. You set off those endorphins in your mind. You get room service, oh. and you sit there till a quarter to eight, and they pick you up. And you're a new fucking man. You're packed already. It's Saturday night. Oh, you're packed. Oh, there yeah. might not be a better feeling than having your room packed, packed, getting out of the shower, still sweating a little bit from your workout, and then getting a call going. We're downstairs, and you know all you got to do is two shows. Two shows. Get the fuck out of Dodge. Oh, all you're waiting on is to pick up the envelope, do the two shows. I love Saturdays because I sleep till about. I get up early, get fucking super stoned. Yeah. And I go right back to sleep. I watch like some Law and Order, some whatever's on TNT, Cold K, whatever the fuck's yeah. on TNT. I absorb that for about an hour, and I nod from like nine thirty till about one thirty. I get up hungry. You go to the bar, whatever, down the block, eat a little lunch. You go back to your room, write a little bit, yeah. watch some TV, read a book. Then you start packing, and then you go to the gym. Then you come back. You order some room service. You don't have to leave the room. You wash your pussy, and they call you the quarter of the eight and tell you they're downstairs. You're packed. You're ready. All you got to do is come back, take that half of Xanax, wake up, get the call, drink your protein drink, and shoot to the fucking airport. And pray there's no emails from American Airlines. Yeah. Because once you open that phone up at four and it says American Airlines, you're like, ooh, your oh. flight's been delayed to 1050. Ooh. <laughs> But the car's still coming at 4.45. Like tomorrow, the car picks me up at 4. Where are you going tomorrow? New York City. What are you doing in New York? Tuesday, my buddy's releasing a book, uh, The Corporation, about the Cuban mob in New Jersey. Really? And he interviewed me. For, his name is TJ English. He wrote a couple other books. Yeah. So I'm going to his book signing premiere. And then Wednesday, I'm doing two shows in Nyack. And Thursday, I'm right back on JetBlue Mint. I sleep maybe three hours. Really? I get on Mint number two, two, four, and six. You're in there by yourself. I plug the sleep apnea machine on. I take an edible. And Nappy Nunu, the, the chick is waking me up. You're, you're landing, Mr. Diaz. <laughs> put up your seat. I unplug the sleep apnea machine. I put it all in the case. They give you a little mint for your bad breath from the sleep apnea machine. Oh. I get out. Tomorrow I got no Uber. The Armenian's out of town. He went to Dubai with his wife because I got the Armenian Uber driver. You just call him first. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then he pulls to the side and Ubers you. I'll just take one of those little cabs and Terminal 6. Nice. At 9.15, I'll be home by 10.30 maybe because it's JetBlue and I'm whatever it is. Montage on JetBlue. So I get my luggage first. I'm not going to wait like the Puerto Ricans. <laughs> I get my luggage first. I go right to the cab. Hopefully, there won't be no overturned cars in the 405. Yeah. I'll be home by 10.15. I throw my shit in the hamper for my wife, put my suitcase away. I'll drive to cryotherapy, get zapped. Oh, I got to do that cryotherapy. Leave there, maybe go home, take a little nappy noonoo, wash my pussy. So what's cryotherapy? Tell me about cryotherapy. Bro, these idiots been talking about it for years. Rogan and Eddie Brown. I know, but I didn't, I, I, I didn't know. I thought that was like, I thought it was like a... Uh, I thought it was for his back. I never thought it was like just from working out. So it's like freezing like 200 below zero for three minutes. So all these people had told me about it. I'm 55, Bert. Yeah. I feel it. When I do something, I feel it. Uh -oh. Last Tuesday, I went to the store. Not one cocktail. 
Not one cocktail, but I stayed out till one. The next day, I was like Zombo. Yeah. That's what happens when you're 55. I went back to Weight Watchers. You can't eat edibles on Weight Watchers. You just can't. Really? You just can't. Because you end up eating. Do you know that I ate a whole fucking Girl Scout cookie box? You know, I need that. Yeah. Those thin mints were there at one in the morning. I'm lurking. I ate a couple of apples. That didn't surprise. Dude. You eat some apples first. I stopped. I, I didn't smoke leading up to the marathon. I didn't smoke weed for like a month. Really? And so, yeah, cause I, but I, I carry around that little Pax vape pen. And I just take like a hit. And I did a spot at the store one night. Two shows. Uh, I have a cocktail and I take a vape pen and I was was talking to Joe in the back getting ready for my special talking about this bit that I was trying to figure out hit the vape pen I have like two cocktails maybe at the store and come home and I took a box of Samoas to the face like I fucking ate yeah no no it's too much I could not stop and every minute after 11 you get hungry and hungry when you're a fat fuck and you do edibles Two weeks ago, I ended up with Lee at the Coral Diner at midnight after a podcast, eating a cheese omelet with toast and hash browns. I'm like, I can't do this no more. So now the edibles are killing me, like 50 milligrams. Like last night, I was watching at close range. Have you ever seen a is close that range? The, is that with Clint Eastwood? Christopher Walken and Sean Penn. Yes, oh. yes, yes. And I watched the beginning of it. In the morning, and then I got home last night early from the podcast about a quarter to nine. I said, let me watch the rest of it. There was one point I was seeing doubles, and I only ate 100 milligrams. I had some beef jerky that had THC in it. Yeah. And I got the weed that kills Stephen Hawkins. (laughs) Oh, the fucking lid won't even put on it. That's how strong it is. The lid just pops (laughs) off by itself. <laughs> because these white stores, these like perennial and all those, yeah, they're selling below average weed now. They're selling recreational weed. Really? So it doesn't get you stoned anymore. That's it. Perennials. That's why I always go perennial. You got to go to the Russians now to get the deep, deep. Really? The Russians don't obey the laws. Wait, where are you going now? I can't say, but it's <laughs> close by. I'll tell you off the mic. Oh. They got shit that's fucking strong. They really? still got 200 milligram edibles. They don't give a fuck about the law. They said fuck the law. In fact, they opened at six and served bagels. Really? So while you're waiting there, you get yourself a little bagelini. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 11 yeah. points on Weight Watchers, a little cream cheese <laughs> from that place on Ventura. Oh, Yeah, they're not fucking around no more. The Russians don't fuck around. I, wondered, I was wondering in that race yesterday, I was like, I wonder if I took um, the high CBD edibles... I was like, because I th- I think those high CBD edibles are going to be the new acetaminophen, the new ibuprofen. Yeah, yeah, they're good. And you should also take in uh, shroom tech. If you would have popped two shroom techs, three shroom techs, really, you would have ran the twenty six miles. That shit kicks in on mile sixteen. Really? <coughs> yeah. There's some quadricep mushrooms. I saw those for, like from do, on it. Yeah, I do a half of one and go to kickboxing some mornings, and some mornings I got to stop and go. Ooh, Nelly. Really? What does it do? It just fucking expands your lungs. Like you get more oxygen, it feels like. Oh, I could have used that yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next time, pop a fucking work yourself up. Get a couple bottles from Aubrey. And day of fucking the race, you eat four of those and a cup of espresso. Yeah. Woo! Oh, dude, you know what they had yesterday? They had those, uh, they have these gel packs that you, it's like, it's just basically potassium and like sodium and glucose, but it's filled with caffeine, 100 milligram shots of caffeine. You suck down one of those and it's just a packet of gel. Suck it down and 100 milligrams of caffeine and you're like, oh, I'm back, baby. And you just, and it would, you'd ride it for like, 45 minutes, an hour, and then you'd, it would fall off. How long did you run on together? Um, five hours and fifty five, five hours and 33 minutes. God bless you. I can't even run for fucking two minutes. Dude, you should have you should have heard Ari. I talked to Ari and Tom right after, like literally minutes after. So were they supposed to do the race also? No. What was the big deal online? He's not donating 10 Gs. <sighs> fucking Tom. Tom just is a dick. He what? just... He, he had he had challenged me to say he said he could roller skate a marathon faster than whoa, I could whoa, run before it. anything. Are those your roller skates? Those are Tom's. I hope that I hope not because all you need is tight pants. Yeah, he'll drive the boys crazy with those things. Those are you know Tom's. Those are Tom's roller skates. He was going to skate the marathon and see if he could skate it faster than I could run it. He hadn't skated. He hasn't roller skated in uh, probably thirty two years. 
So like he and I go, Tom, it's a brand new set of muscles. Trust me, I've roller skated a bunch, and even when I put on roller skates, I have a hard time. Yeah, the next them. day you're done. The yeah. inside of those legs are done. And so I think it was more like a joke. We were fucking around on Rogan's podcast. I don't think he ever really, literally planned on doing it. But then when I started doing the marathon, everyone's like, "Is Tom skating it?" And so as a joke, I was like, "No, Tom backed out." And Tom's, and then everyone started calling him the new Welch. Cause, and he, dude, they hate being called a Welch. And then Tom just wrote, posted a video and said, um, hey, I just talked to Brent Crystals or whatever the fuck he calls me. And he was like, he said, if he can finish the marathon, he'll donate $10,000 to Children's Hospital. And if he can't, he'll donate twenty. Which I was like, why would I donate $10,000 if, if I do? Like, what the fuck? That's not a bet. And then I was like, if I am donating to, to $10,000, it's going to be to my, a charity. I, I don't, I'm not going to just donate it to... Whatever you tell, I'm not gonna let you bully me into donating. So how come Ari? How did so then, Ari get involved? Oh, because in Ari loves the fucking. It's the three of us love the drama. So Ari starts fucking chiming in. I'm so proud of Brent or Bert for fucking donating the money. I'll donate five hundred and thirty-five dollars, and then and then everyone starts. Some people started believing them and going like, "Man, you really are a great guy, Bert." And then of course the majority of people are like. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Bird. You're such a general... Like, whatever. They're fucking around. And so then I just ignore it. I'm like, I'm definitely not donating $10,000 if I can f- finish a race. Like, let's do it the other way. If I can't finish, I'll donate ten. But if I can, you guys... Like, because they're the ones saying I could never run a marathon. Joe, Ari, and Tom were like, you could not run a marathon. They were like, you... In all fairness, I think Joe was saying... You could probably, I, I don't know what Joe was saying, but I know Ari and Tom were like, you could not finish a marathon. Never. And I was like, I could definitely do a marathon, no training. And they're like, impossible. They're like, and Ari's like, my dad did it and my dad trained and he, it took him six hours and 15 minutes. You couldn't beat my dad's time. I'm, and I'm like, out of all respect, your dad is 80, Ari. Like, I can definitely think I can do it as, I can keep pace with an 80 year old. And he tweeted this 30 minutes ago. What did he tweet? Congratulations to Bert Kreischer for not only running a marathon, but also for finishing top five in your weight class. I didn't think there was any way you could do it. I was wrong. Sorry for not believing you and in the Mickey Mantle gene. Oh, fucking. That's the, that's the thing is like, I, I jokingly said I had this Mickey Mantle gene. I kind of believe it a little bit where I go, you can do whatever you put your mind to. I go Mickey Mantle gene. I can party all night. I can get up. I can perform the next day. I can... Long strand DNA. I can go. I go. I, I just flip my brain and I go. I can do whatever. Like Tom, when we did the weight loss challenge, Tom literally started like seven months out before we did the weight loss challenge. He was like seven months. He started training for this weight loss challenge and attacking me before we started to do the challenge. I was the same weight as him and I lost forty five pounds in thirty days. And and Joe was like. How that's not healthy, and I just instead of going, yeah, you're totally right, it's not healthy. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm well aware of that. I just was like, oh, it's a Mickey Mantle gene, and they started making fun of me for saying I had this Mickey Mantle gene, where it was like I can just put my mind to something and I just do it. And I go, it's long strand DNA, and so then when we did the sober October, and I was like, I could easily not drink for a month, and all of them are like, impossible, you'll have strokes, you're gonna seizure out. There's no fucking way. I go, Mickey Mantle gene, I can do it. Did it. And then the next, when we went back into the podcast again, that's when I brought up the marathon. And they were like, and all I remember, definitely Ari and Tom were like, you could never do a marathon. Never do a marathon. You could not do a marathon. You are out of shape. Joe's running. Why don't you call Joe out? Well, Joe. I, no, Joe, Joe runs a couple days a week. So say, next one I do, I'll challenge you and cause a war and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Cause of war, challenge him to a fucking duel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If, I don't. I don't know if I want to put my Mickey Mantle gene up against the Joe Rogan gene. Go ahead, fuck it. Take a chance. Columbus did. You know what I'm Do a half a marathon and whip them all and show them all yeah. how it's done. I think if once I, and for all, just challenge them all to a fucking marathon. I dare you. Give them six months to get in shape. Yeah. And tell them you'll whip them all. Like I won't how, train at all. No, you got to train. You got to fuck them up. You got to secretly train. Tell yeah. them that you're not training. You got the Mickey Mantle gene. But meanwhile, you're fucking running from here to hold you high every day. Yeah. And then fuck them up, everybody. <laughs> I Just should. Make I, them meet their words. Call them out six months. Like Conor McGregor. Yeah. Call them out six months ahead of time and go, I'm daring Ari, fucking oh, yeah. Joe and Thomas Fat to fucking challenge me 
to a 13 mile marathon in fucking Orange County. Yeah, make, we should, I should do a half marathon and race find them in a half the next marathon. one in Orange County. And yeah, when Ari's in town, so there's no fucking conflicting Australian dates and shit. And get them out there. If they suffer, you gotta suffer. To Joe. I bet if Joe decided to do something like Joe that. Joe would fuck him up. He'd do great. He'd he be would great be, at that. He would flip He's a gotten his head into running. Yeah. So once you turn your head into it and you fall in love with that feeling, yeah. it's better than smoking pot. Oh, That running, and when you're running up a hill, the first 10 times you're going to hate it. But once you start doing it and getting the hang of it, you, you, the endorphins, you know, whatever the fuck they call them, they just set loose. It's 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 like Harvey Weinstein sperm. It's everywhere. You know Dude, there is there is that <laughs> that that uh, that that uh, runner's high you get where like there was a part where I'm listening to uh, Foo Fighters Everlong and I'm running downhill in Silver Lake and that high where you're just like, dude, I'm I'm crushing it. At, like at that time, I was running at like a eight minute mile pace just flying down a hill and i was like dude like that runner's high is no joke no joke and, and it, anything you do like if you jumped in a pool yeah at seven in the morning and you swam for an hour when you get out of that pool you know what you're gonna feel like like a million bucks yeah. same thing for running no matter what you do when you wake up early and do it that you don't have a gun to your head yeah. you just do it out of the kindness of your ball sack there you go, a little something for the podcast. That's some onions I had at lunch. I went over and had the fucking albacore, sizzling albacore at Sushi Dan. Oh, it's, really? it's sliced albacore, no rice, with onions, big chunks of garlic, and jalapeno. You take the soy sauce, you throw a chunk of wasabi on it, you mix oh. it up good, and then you pour it over the albacore. No points on Weight Watchers. Soy's got no points, wasabi's got no points, and fish with no rice got no points. Oh my God. And you inhale that like a savage, and then I had a little Philly roll just to balance me off. I didn't have the salmon lunchbox. So I had four points in the Philly roll and zero for fucking albacore, like a soldier. But I'm going to be farting all night. <laughs> and tomorrow on the plane, once that garlic develops and conglomerates in your stomach, yeah. you know, one thing, I don't get up. When you, those people, when they fart real bad on a plane, it's yeah. because they took the early flight. And you didn't get a chance to shit. And now you hold it in for two hours on that flight. You ever hold the fart in, twisted? Dude. Or garlic shit? Like, if you ever go to that garlic restaurant... The, the first stinking rose. Go to the stinking rose and see what comes out the first time you shit the garlic cleans you out. Dude, that I went to the stinking rose with my parents one time and went and played golf the next day. Oh. And all of us were just farting and stinking. Dude. And, don't and they plan- smell those farts smell. Oh. It's like when you go to Benny Hanna. That's that certain sauce, the ginger sauce. Oh my that god. That shit will fucking take your stomach. Did you go on that thing yet? The Swiss Chris? No, what's that? I lost like fucking five pounds. What is it? It's it's a pill. You go on Amazon. It's a Ali Sadiq thing. He lost 12 pounds on it. You go on Amazon the first week, you drop two pills. And the second week, you drop four pills and let your asshole open. It's like a fucking play. Really? Once the curtain opens, everything comes out from your birth. Bubble gum. I saw a fortune. Everything you ate as a kid. The one Sunday night, I got up every hour on the hour with a shit. Really? Like, you shit everything out. Bubble gum, old meat, <laughs> all those old toxins that sit in your fucking stomach, your small intestine. Yeah. You shit. So what's the name of the pill? I want to get it. Swiss Chris. Swiss you go Chris. On that for two weeks. Two weeks. Two pills the first week and four pills a night before you go to bed the second week. Swiss Chris. The first week, your stomach just makes weird noises. You'll call me and go, Joey, not for nothing. I heard a noise in my stomach I've never heard before. But once you start shitting, the one day I shit a cane out of my ass. It was a cane. <laughs> and it broke in the toilet. It had a little handle at the end and everything. It was like Mike Tyson's dick. It was four different colors. It went from real African black to like Mexican black and all in one shit. This stuff is brilliant. Buying it right now. Right now, eight ninety nine. Add the cart. You take two pills a night for the first week, and then take four the second week. You'll call me by the second week, going, Joey, what is happening to me? All right, I just ordered your it. Color looks better in your face. Really it takes all the toxins. How did out. Ali find about it? Ali Sadiq. Yeah, how did he find out about prison? It? You know, prison. How do you whatever <laughs> Ali Sadiq <laughs> finds out about shit? It's an old prison trick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, he. Uh, he doesn't even have 10 pounds to lose. But he did. He When he did the, one of those, uh, this is not happening, he was heavier. 
Yeah, and he said he started working out, and he went on that to clean the set system out. And I don't think I don't think I don't think it's so funny. I think running has to do with your brain because I don't think Ari and Tom could run half a marathon. I don't think their brain like I think I, Tom couldn't. I think Ari's a type of knucklehead. Yeah, it's like you got him into yoga that month, and he went. Yeah, he killed he went, it. He went. He went. He went. You know, he'll do it. Yeah, he'll run. He likes to take his shirt off. Maybe I'll. Maybe, I'm sure we'll do a podcast. Yeah, tell him, tell the four, him. three of us, and I'll and challenge him. Come up with the date and everything. Yeah. So if you do the podcast in July, before you even go in there, have a marathon set for November. Third, we'll do and we'll call, do a half, go Ari. Do a half marathon, which is doable. Ari, you're off that weekend, and Tom, you're canceling Des Moines. Yeah, and just say it, and don't say a word. Whoever speaks first loses. Yep, just drop it on them and see what they say. Whoever speaks first <laughs> loses already. You should have heard the the sound of Tom's voice when he called me, and he goes, "You really ran a fucking marathon?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes, "He was like, it was almost like it was." He didn't want to say it, but he, he was like, "That Mickey Mantle jeans real." Like I can't Fuck believe yeah. you fucking You're did the last it. Of the real deal. You're not an alcoholic. <laughs> You just socially drink and let people know you don't give a fuck. Yeah. I wouldn't let you drink for the podcast because right now your muscles are dehydrated already. Yeah, my muscles are fucking wreck. That alcohol will dehydrate you even more. So why fuck around with booze? Tomorrow is booze day. Yeah. Today is water, a little reefer to calm the lungs, let them know you're all right. Yeah. Maybe a little cold shower, give mama a stabbing, give her some fucking 26-mile sperm, (laughs) give her a shot of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. (laughs) Wait, wait, how would you, how did you lose weight when you were at your biggest? I hit the bag and I rode the bicycle at the YMCA at night when nobody was around. Really? And I, or I would go to swimming at 4.45 in the morning and do Dude, laps. swimming's hard as shit. Swimming is the motherfucker. Swimming, I wouldn't mind. I wish there was a pool I could get in close to here and swim. Because I, would, I, would I used to be on a swim team when I was in high school. You know, my flexibility and my shoulders is fucked to do a regular over the shoulder anymore yeah. so I have to pull myself which is better in a way it's good for your shoulders and your back Yeah, I'll put a buoy between my legs and I'll just fucking pull myself but there's no heated pools around here these pools so in they're California cold as shit? Huh? they're cold as shit Jesus Christ that YMCA in North Hollywood I don't know how my daughter does it Oh my god. That pool is freezing. I couldn't do that. The one in Hollywood's cold, but they got a warm water pool. They got like a ninety degree water pool that's four feet. You go in there at five in the morning, they got a steam bath, they got a sauna. You put a little eucalyptus on the sauna, clean out your nostrils, coke rocks fall out. (laughs) That was my game back then. I'd snort coke till three and then jerk off till four forty five and go to the Y all creepy. There'd be like a gay guy in there laying in the sauna naked. I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Oh, Only gay dudes go in the sauna and get completely naked and lay on towels with their dicks on. You're like, shave their balls. You yeah. ever see gay guys shave the their Russians balls? The Russians go in there. They sit there and they drink vodka with a white little furry hat on Yeah, at five in the morning. Yeah, I would go in there and I know who was still out from the night before because they were going there to pick up. Yeah, They get freaky and shit. So the gay guys would always lay like in the steam bath naked with their dick out like they were fucking. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Who would lay like this in public? They got no class. Dude, I was I used to go to the sauna and steam room at Crunch on Sunset. Oh, they'll fuck you in the ass there. Dude, I fuck saw you the- dudes sucking dick oh, in the steam yeah. room. And the other place, in Santa Monica, there's a gym in between La Cienega and Dan Tanner's. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. There's a men's gym I there. I love Dantana's. Oh, but across the street from Dantana's, there's a protein place yeah. that makes milkshakes and shit. The best in town. Like, protein shakes. Really? Like really, like, good. But next to it, there's a, ma- a, ma- a gay gym, like a gym. They'll suck your dick in there, for sure. <laughs> and Gower, there's a, there's a, a yeah. gold gym in Gower. My friend Christy Miller used to work there. She's a comedian out of New York. Great lady. And when I was 418, she quit. But she finagled me a membership. Really? And I would go there late night, and it's all gay. I saw some action in there, like guys hooking up and holding hands. But nobody ever bothered me. In fact, the gay guys were kind of nice to me. They would come over and say, you're a big guy. Are you sure you're okay? And I would go, yeah. I mean, they're dying for me to, for me to pass out, <laughs> to come over and put their dick in my mouth when I'm sleeping. I mean, I would. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Lee's been hanging out with this gay dude that's cool as shit, an open micer. Yeah. And the guy took Lee to an open mic. And I'm like, uh, gay bar. 
Lee goes on this TV screen. They had men fucking. In the back, men were fucking. I go, Lee. And he goes, yeah, everybody was real nice to me. Sure. <laughs> they got a, you got a, Somebody fucks you in the ass, they got a $500 referral free. <laughs> That's fresh asshole. You know what I'm saying? Any gay guy could fuck a gay guy, but to convert a guy? Yeah. That's 10 points. That's. I always thought that. Uh, we were talking, me and my buddy were talking to Andy Dick one time. And we were like, and I don't know if, I don't know if Andy Dick is gay or not, but he was talking like he was. And we we're like, does, have you ever hooked up with a straight guy? And he's like, oh, those are the best. Those are the best. That's, yeah. it's, that's your challenge. Anybody could close a gay guy, but close a regular guy. Can you imagine me and you doing blow, blow? We do a couple lines, three in the morning. I'm like, Bert, how long do you want to suck dick for? You're like, what are you talking about? And I'll convince you. Come on, Bert, just give it a little suck. Just smell yeah. it. I see how you are around guys. You want to suck dick, don't you? You're running close to that guy's asshole in the race. Oh, that's got to be fucking amazing if you're gay to, talk to, to, guy to switch a it. guy into it. Oh, my God. That's like talking to a girl that's coming over to your house to paint into sucking your dick. Oh. That's Harvey type shit. You got to you gotta work them slow with magic. <laughs> Remember that Bobby Slayton joke? Like, that's the baddest motherfucker in the world, James Bond? No. Chicks come over to kill him, then they suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's the baddest guy in the world. Right? Yeah. They come over to fucking kill you, and next thing you know, they're sucking your dick. Only James Bond can do that shit. Yeah. So wait, how long has Lee been doing stand-up? About two or three months. Really? And you know what, bro? He's a good little writer. He's like a Woody Allen nerdy type. Yeah. Like, he has good little jokes, and he goes out to three shows a night. And really? Yeah, he's into it. God bless him. Listen, like I told him, even if he doesn't continue with it it's gonna lead him to what he wants to do you know what i'm saying yeah like he doesn't know he's like any other fucking how old is lee he's gonna be 30 in july oh yeah fucking 30 30 you don't know dick about dick and you don't need to know dick about dick all you need to know is try to get happy and try to find what you love yeah and figure out how to make money doing it that's your 30s that's your 20s dicking around working and fucking until one day you go you know what I'm going to polish roller skates. I like roller skates. And that's it. You open up your own roller skate business, and there you are. Yeah. Who the fuck knows? But nothing's not going to happen by not trying. So I told him, I go, Lee, what's, you're involved in this. You're learning this from a different eye. You're seeing what we do on a podcast, stand up. God knows. You might be a manager. You might end up a producer. You might turn up an agent. Yeah. You might be a stand up. You might be a camera guy. That's what this is all about. You really don't know. I knew I was going to be a stand-up. But how many guys have you talked to, had conversations with, had deep conversations about stand-up? They went to Montreal. And the next thing you know, you go to a commercial audition, there they are behind the camera. Well, I really wanted to work on an audition. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. I came in to be a stand-up. I'm a stand-up. Yeah, I didn't come in with a bunch of... Like, I literally thought... I never thought I'd do the road. I thought you just lived in New York and did stand up. I didn't know that you could do the road. I mean, I knew there was LA, but I didn't know they did stand up in LA. I thought it was just in New York. Like when I started, no. I I knew so little about the business. That was my appeal to it, to travel. Really? The travel and the hiding. And the waking up somewhere different every day. Really? Like that whole thing was what I really liked about it. I, I you know, like when I watched movies, I as a kid, I, I saw these guys who lived alone. You know, he grew up on Kung Fu. He went from town to town. Yeah. And they he solved him. problems, you know. Yeah. I liked it. I liked going into the unknown not knowing. I really, I, I, all your life when you're a child, you go to college and you try to become this person at 25 that's responsible and has a job and you have credit cards and a car and all this shit. And right before you, right when you get your degree, and you realize what you've taught, got yourself into, Yeah, you're like, what did I do? Do I really want to brown bag it to work every day for five fucking years yeah. and hate it? And what do I got? I got Leanne, who's great, but this is like if you lived in Georgia. It's like if you lived in Georgia where Leanne's from. Uh -huh. Basically, what are your weeks concerned of? You work Monday through Friday. Yep. Saturday, you do shit with the girls. And Sunday, you go to Leanne's parents. Yep. For dinner. That's Every what your life would be. Week. That's what your life would be. Now, there's people that love living in that thing. When I got there the first time at 25, like I had a wife and a kid, it was like, this sucks. Yeah. This is it. So I got a job and I do this till I'm 65, and some people tell me I'm a great man. They give me a gold watch. 
Yeah. This is what you're telling me? This is the bill of lading my generation got sold. We were talking about high school diplomas the other day. Yeah. You know, we were talking, I, I have asked Lee, I've asked a couple people who are young, you have a college degree? Yeah. Let me ask you something. When you go for a job, they talk to you about it and they go, no. No. Not even once. You can write down whatever the fuck you want. Oh, yeah. You know. You do not need a college. You, you, all you have to write is uh, BS, Florida State. Uh, Bachelor of Science. That's what you State. have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I think. Yeah, I think that's it. You know, right? you, I don't know. Did you go to college? I went to music school for two years. <laughs> and what do you do now? I produce podcasts. Okay. <laughs> so, they, you know, you don't know what the fuck you want to do. Yeah. And now these kids are coming out of you. I mean, you have two daughters, and you have one that's right around the corner from getting in this mess quick. Yeah. You know, she's how old now? 12. 13. 13. In four years, in, in three years, Georgia is going to be talking about colleges at fucking dinner. Uh, and, you know, and you want to look at him and go, Georgia, can I take you for a ride? Let's go to a bar. You know what I'm saying, Georgia, look, honey. But children need the college experience. Yeah. I didn't have what you had. I wasn't part of a frat. I went there like a fucking victim. I was looking for purses. I went there to rob. I went there to fucking action. So what? Tuesday and Thursday, six, 12 credits, whatever it was. But if I could do it all over again, man, like the whole thing of going to college is a beautiful thing. But at the end, Georgia, I'm dropping 400 G's, which you're going to pay 200 of that bitch. Yeah. Because I ain't paying. My father didn't pay for mine. You paying 200 of that bitch. And after four years, you're going to go out into the real world, Georgia. Why don't you do this? Why don't you book my fucking dates? Why don't you do this for a year? Go do retail. Yeah. And learn about the world. Learn about how people lie to you. Tell you they're coming back in 10 minutes to buy the radio. I learned my, you know, the other day I went to a new, after 11 years of loyalty to one acupuncturist, I just figured out it was too much. It was too much for me to, it's an hour down to Marina Del Rey, I spend an hour with her, and then it's an hour back yeah. once a week, even when I go on the, on the road. Three hours for no fight, that's too much. So after 11 years, I broke out and I said, let me explore my things up here. Yeah. And I went to this acupuncturist. I didn't even go on Groupon. I just asked around, and everybody referred me to the same guy. And I went up there to see him, and the guy was fucking great. Yeah. Like, I left there, wow, blown away. Like, I had been doing acupuncture, but it was like 2002 acupuncture. Yeah. This guy's living in fucking acupuncture world. Like, he knew, he said shit to me that I was like, this guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. And that was on a Friday. And do you know Monday... I walked in from my errands, and on top of my desk was a couple letters. My wife dropped them in the office, and one of them was a card. And I opened it, and it was from that doctor. Handwritten, saying, thank you for coming. I hope you looked over your reports, and I hope to see you again. I picked up the phone, and I made an appointment with him. And I came back, and I told my wife, even if my acupuncturist moves next door to me, I'll still go to this guy, yeah. because he sent a thank you card. That's something that's forgotten in this country. They don't teach that. That's knowledge. something I learned from selling cars. So when I come back from an audition, I walk in the door, I open the computer, and I look at the audition sheet, and I look at the casting director's address, and I take a thank you card, and I write it out, and I send them. I've been doing this for years. In fact, I was at Target one day on Wilshire Bull in Hollywood. Like one afternoon, I went to the doctor, like one morning, and I yeah. said, let me go to Target. While I'm down here, there's no traffic, and I went to Target. Who's in there but Maz Jabrani with his kids? Yeah. And I picked up a few things, and he asked me, what was I doing in that aisle? And I go, I'm picking up thank you cards for auditions. And he goes, he looked at me, he goes, I remember when I used to do that. And he had like a smile on his face, and he goes, I think it's time to get a few boxes. Really? Yeah, because that's the shit I learned from selling cars. Somebody comes, sees you. As soon as they walk out the door, you get their information. Send them a thank you card. You call them in two days. Check up on them. Did you make a decision? You call them in seven days. Now you write them a letter. Yeah. And explain to them, handwritten, you know. These are the basics of life that we've forgotten. 20 years ago, when you shopped at a delicatessen and you went in there every day, for Christmas, they gave you a calendar. 
Nobody gives you a calendar no more. Nobody even sends you a fucking card for Christmas no more. Yeah. Remember when you got here, your agency would always have a Christmas party? Yup. There's no more Christmas parties. No. Sutton Barton and Ari used to have fucking parties. <laughs> Three rooms filled with fucking food, pinatas. Oh. They don't, nobody does that shit no more. We no one does. We've changed the game. We don't want to, we want to communicate through email. That's why I won't return your text. I won't, I'll never return somebody's text message. You could text message me. I text messaged you today. Did I? So you're blue in the face. You text messaged me the other morning and it freaked me the fuck out. Yeah. I'll, I thought I'll, something was wrong. I yeah, was like, no, no, no. Joey no. never texts. No, you could text me till you're green in the face. I won't, I do it on print. And if it's for business, yeah. you're definitely not getting a text back from me. Because yeah. if you're that fucking stupid, I don't want you in my life. Oh, I stopped. I stopped. Like if you text me for a date, I won't even answer you back. No, yeah. I won't even answer you back. You're dead. You're dead. If I don't know the number, it gets erased. It doesn't even get opened. Oh, I just got a new phone and I'm getting texts from people and I'm just like, oh, I'll block this number. I don't like that. I don't know this person. No, I don't no, know, I don't who know it is. the number. You're in no danger. Yeah. If you call and I don't know the number, that phone will ring till your motherfucking head fall off. <laughs> you'll never you'll never fucking get the number. I don't play games. I don't really even Too many fucking knuckleheads got your shit and they call you now. Yeah. So if I don't know you, I don't know nothing. Yeah. Somebody bumped into me the other day, dog, I I text you ten times, but I don't get text messages. It was a gig, you should have called. That's business. Yeah. If not, I don't want even want to do business with you fucking rotten ass. Go take your little dirty text fucking fingers. <laughs> Somewhere and bother them. I stopped. Uh, I kind of stopped looking at emails because I figured if it's important, someone will call me about it. Ah, uh, you got to look at emails. I don't. I don't. I don't really like. I'll open them up and flip through them, but like I, a lot of times, because I, I tell people just CC Leanne on it, and if it's important, Leanne will be like, "Hey, did you get that email about this?" But like I, it just like my in, my email inbox is like ridiculous. I get flooded with fucking so much spam that I just I. I it's like I should start oh, an email. Yeah. Don't you have a fucking box that deciphers that shit? No, man. That's what are you, Gmail? No. Uh, Apple. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm old school. I still got hot mail. I'm still throwing I got 45,000 unread emails. Yeah, you're a fucking retard. <laughs> 45,000. How embarrassing. Just erase them. Yeah. Why are you even clogging up your space for? Just erase them. All I, that but I shit. open it and it's like... Uh, like uh, maybe I should have read that one. That was about that shoot I did today. What shoot did you do today? Some uh, thing for this parenting parenting uh, website. Just talking about being a, a bad parent. I think it was, I don't know. I Natasha had done it, so I was like, ah, oh, fuck. If the, Natasha and uh, Kira Sultanovich had done it, and I was like, I'll go in do it for an hour. That's why. That's what I drove down to Santa. They gave Monica you an for. envelope. Uh, yeah. All right, then you do yeah. what you gotta do. Yeah, it was nice. And then came back, it was perfect. My legs are fucking in so much goddamn pain. You rub like, some CBD oil on them? No. You go to fucking perennial and buy CBD 1 1. Really? 1 to 1 CBD and spray it under your tongue three to four times tonight. Really? After we finish the podcast, go to perennial before okay. it gets traffic y. I'm gonna go over to perennial. And I wanna go to the. I wanna, what, time, what time is that cry, cryogenic place open? 8 o'clock. It's right around the corner from. For so real? You go to perennial. It's on it's on Colfax and Ventura. You get in yeah. your car, you go back on Ventura and head to Tahunga. There's a little mall in there. They yeah. got a big weed store, a Chinese restaurant, a magic shop. Oh, Cryo, yeah, I know that place. Cryotherapy's right in there. For real. Go in there, tell them this is your first time, $29. They'll put you in a thing. Do not panic. Really? Don't panic. Breathe out of your nose. It's fresh oxygen. Really? Fresh oxygen. Tell is them it, it's hard. Terry couldn't do it? But Terry's a fucking pussy. I love my wife, but she also <laughs> flunked at acupuncture one time. She put a needle in and left the room. My wife was like, oh. Are you oh, serious? Yeah, my wife, she's Indian. Those Indians, <laughs> you know, they, they shoot arrows and shit like that. They're not good at that shit. That acupuncture don't work on them. It's like, you know. Yeah. So she went in there and she freaked out after like 30 seconds. I went in there. Listen to what happened. I had heard about it from Joe. I'm 55. Yeah. I really want to go away from 300 pounds. How much as you much right as now? I can. I'm 285. So I joined Weight Watchers December 9th at 309. Yeah. I'm 285. Is it? That's, that's great. It. And that's it. You got to get away from the Ralphie syndrome. It does nothing yeah. for you on stage. It does nothing for you in life. And all of this is tightening your diet. Dude, I was it's just toying, tightening your diet. I was toying with the idea of like, when, in the, when I was running this marathon, I thought, this is ridiculous that I can't go faster. That my body's like, 
that, that I'm. You're 40 years weight. old. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, I need to. That's number one. There's I need too to drop much weight on your. I frame. need to drop the weight. Yeah, there's too much weight on the frame. And and the other thing, I was like, I was like, I can't do another. And I mean, I just did my last special with my shirt off. I was like, I can't just keep doing it with my shirt off. I got to put my shirt on. I was like, I'm gonna fucking lose weight, get in good shape, and then it'll be ridiculous. Well, if, I if take you my do shirt a special, off. you got a six pack. Yeah. Now you change the world. Yeah. Now you change the world. People go, Burke could do it, I could do it. So do your next special with a six pack on and hot pants and bring those roller skates up there. Skate up. And you'll drive the boys crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tom will be there licking your horn, the whole fucking yeah. thing. Poor Tom Segura. He's at home right now going, I can't fucking believe this fucking dude did it. <laughs> God bless you. Good for you. He's he's. So did you get the tweet about the guy sitting next to you on the plane farting? Yeah. Was he farting bad? Horrifically. But I was farting too, so I thought it was me. So I was just ripping him too. We were sitting. He was passed out. Fucking eye mask on. And there was a, a couple next to us. And I let out the first fart. And then he started letting out farts. But I thought there was it was just mine. So what I did is I just turned the 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 air up to blow down and then what i do sometimes i didn't do it this flight but what i do sometimes i get a a coffee filter with coffee beans in it from the flight attendant and sit on i sit on it and i fart into that that's the best way to fucking like that's the oh, best way listen the marathon is one thing <laughs> drinking tito's <laughs> some of the shit you do but you actually listen when i sign a plane that plane ticket's expensive if i want to fart it's bombs away. I don't give a fuck about nobody. Yeah. I just sit. I look straight ahead, and I can. I'll adjust my fucking hips so the <laughs> fart blows up. And there's a fan on the side. If you ever smoke a vapor pen on a plane, oh, really, you'll notice if you take the window seat, that's where you smoke. You can smoke for an hour. Really? Yeah, because the the air is on the bottom. Test it. Next time you have a vapor pen, wear a hooded sweatshirt, and take the pen and put it in your sleeve, and hit it. And go like this, and watch how fast the smoke goes. Really? So when you fart, you, there's no need to put coffee beans in your ass, or <laughs> just leave your underwear on. It works like a coffee filter. Dude. It catches the loose shit. <laughs> Those prepackaged coffee filters with the coffee beans. Yeah. You sit on that, you fart. It just smells like the brewing coffee. No, no, no. I no, do that no, all the time. I pay too much for a plane ticket. I, I in fact, I, I fly with sweats now. Oh, for real? Balances, so I don't have to take my belt off, dude. Because I got fucking clear. I got, I'm a pimp like you. I got clear, dude. I go right up. I put my eyeballs in the thing. She cuts in front. I love it. You just cut in front of white people. They yeah. fucking get pissed. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, good. Right. They cut right. They don't even get if they. They're about to pick up the suitcase, and the lady goes, "Excuse me, go." Yeah, I put my shit on there. I got sweats on with a thing. I wear a white t-shirt, a hooded sweatshirt. I want to get a nice pair of sweats oh, and just fly in those. New Balance. Yeah, nice sneakers. You're comfortable. If you gotta walk, if you can fly through Detroit, that's the problem. You gotta be prepared to fly. Who's gonna fly with jeans and a belt? I gotta take my belt off, then put it back on. Fuck you. My wife got me some Nike sweats. Nice. I put nice me undies on first. Oh. The cup, the nutsack. You get the vapor pen. I hide it in the sleep apnea machine. I got my iPad, a book, an iPod. I got my speakers. I got a Xanax. I got an edible. You know how we do it, player. We prepared to fly tomorrow. I got a five hour flight tomorrow. On the drive, on the Uber flight, on the Uber drive down, first thing I do when I get up on tomorrow at 3 a.m. is pop a protein shake. I go out to, to the fucking bathroom, smoke some pot. Yeah. I take a shower, pop a protein shake. Then my wife will make me an egg sandwich tomorrow. Two, two eggs on two pieces of white bread, a piece of cheese. The eggs are free. So it's Over easy four scramble. points. I'm a fucking sunny side up. I want to yes. break the yolk oh. with the cheese. Fucking tremendous. I don't put the tail of ham or the ham on it to save on the points. Yeah. By the time I get to the airport, I'm fucking full. If I'm a Terminal 5, they got that good place, I get the oatmeal. Yeah, which way we turn five? Is that Delta? Delta. Yeah. Delta. They have that place that you go in. Yeah, yeah, like and the they have lemonades. Market. Yeah. Oh. But American Terminal Four, Gate Forty Nine through Forty Eight. Yeah. You go in there. In that little area to the left. To the left, and they yeah. got a fucking hamburger with a with a piece of egg on top, with cheese, with steak fries. That'll put hair on your mother's pussy. Do you understand me? God. Your mother's pussy will grow black hair like it did in the beginning. <laughs> it is so good. But 
you gotta if you gotta catch a six a.m. flight, it don't open till five, so you're already yeah. boarding. It don't open till a quarter to six. Yeah. So whenever I fly American, if I catch that eight thirty one, my dick gets hard, cause I'm there at six a.m. getting a burger. They you know egg what they got it. there? That bar has that has the uh, the pork sandwiches with the mustard or roast beef sandwiches with the mustard the really really hot fresh, mustard made fresh. like the fleeps you know fleeps yeah 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 they have one in there <sighs> that mustard's so spicy it'll make you cough like what you, restaurant an american airlines american airlines the bar that's right you got to walk past the bar to go back to the burger joint They've got that. They've got the the spicy mustard they got at Philippe's. And you can get a turkey sandwich, a Reuben. You can get any of the sandwich, but with that mustard, oh my god! Yeah, that's some at ports that like tomorrow. I fly out of Kennedy. I'm excited on Thursday because I leave early because I know I get a steak and eggs from they got whatever there, Morton's. They oh yeah, 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 yeah! Right Kennedy. to the right, right there. Yeah, get yourself a little steak. That place eggs, is fucking phenomenal. Some wheat toast. There's just some airports like when you leave Houston, you get some breakfast tacos or oh, Austin, dude. You get breakfast tacos when you leave Buffalo. They got them beef on wicks. Oh, oh my god. god, are you fucking nuts? That's what's good about those airports. Dude, you, you can know. do a travel show just about the food at airports. Oh my god. Newark, Newark yeah. Airport blows. Yeah, but if you fly into Virgin and fly out of Virgin, they got a world famous crab cake place in Newark. Really? And you get two crab cakes with two eggs, sunny side up, and toast. Let me tell you something. You're pissed that you didn't take two more for the flight. Really? The crab cakes are out of this fucking world. We went. Me and Billy Gardell were flying out of Pittsburgh, and we're going up the escalator where they got that Franco Harris catching the ball. And Billy goes, "Bro, the st- Stromboli's here through the fucking roof." I said, "Really?" He goes, "Best Strom breakfast Stromboli I've ever had in my life." Walk up two breakfast Strombolis, and I had. I literally was like, "How have I?" This is now something I will do every time. Every I come time. To this There's some airport. airports. That are tip top Magoo. They Chicago, got great food. Chicago. I all the Italian it. food. Oh my god. Oh, I go there all the time. They got the fucking the dip. hour delay. Oh my god. All the time. I make Rogan go in there. I've made a thousand people go in there. Hurry. Oh. If I fly through Chicago and it's a two hour delay, my dick gets hard. Yeah. Because I go right to that Italian <laughs> restaurant. I put the fucking napkin on like like I'm Vito oh. Corleone. <laughs> oh. And I fucking go bananas. Oh, I love all that shit. I have oh. all the cities picked out. Yeah. Like there's certain cities. When I used to snort Coke, that's when I really got to learn the breakfast spots. Because oh, yeah. all you want to do is eat before you get on that plane. Fucking Houston hobby. Right when you get to that terminal, they have breakfast tacos, oh, yeah. potato eggs, and chorizo with some fucking salsa. About eight of those. Oh, my God. I would have like eight of those with, with rice and beans and a fucking Coke. Yeah. You get on that plane, it's nappy noo time. You have a half a Xanax and a fucking edible. I, I haven't taken a Xanax on a flight in so long. I got baby Xanax. I have the point two five. They don't do nothing yeah, to that's you. What, yeah, that's what I But do. I'll pop them before I go on stage. I got yeah. anxiety before I go on stage. Really? But I throw more away than what I take. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, tomorrow, I'll get up anxious and I'll pop one before the plane. Yeah. I'll eat 50 milligrams. I'll eat the, what I told you at the house. It's jet blue and it's fucking mint. So they got that. They give you five options on the menu. Oh... And you just sit there, they give you a little mint, they give you a little mint drink in the beginning, like a little mint julep. Oh. You can have it with vodka, without vodka. Then they bring you a case with stuff to cover your eyes. You get a little mint, you get a toothbrush. So when you wake up, you can brush your teeth like a fucking human being. Oh. And you press that bed all the way back. And you can either sit with somebody. I opt to sit by myself. I pay the extra tariff yeah. to sit solo in a fucking boot. You slide the thing, you get your vapor pen, you put on Godfather 2, they have it on the fucking screen, they got direct TV. Oh, oh Jet Blue Mint. It only goes from here to Boston and from here to fucking Jet Kennedy. Blue Mint. I've never flown Jet Blue oh, Mint. Oh that's what pimps fucking fly. I gotta after. check that out. That's my I've, own. I've only flown American. Every time I gotta fly to New York, because listen, American first class. You're never gonna bump. You're never gonna bump into Canada. No, no. And you're no. not gonna bump into Chicago. Nope. They're never gonna give you an upgrade. No. They're You'll those, never catch an upgrade um, going into to Kennedy. I have caught an upgrade coming back from Kennedy in business class. Yeah, uh, I yeah, have yeah. caught 
upgrades coming back for some reason. And now they fly 737s into Miami, American. They don't fly the 767s or the 77s, uh, 777s. So if you do get upgraded, you're on a six-hour flight in an upright. Like, you don't get the sleeper bed. I want the sleeper bed. The business class in American is is close enough to a sleeper bed. I want to fucking sleep. I might change. I might have just changed everything. You made me not. You were the reason I stopped doing Sunday shows, and you're going to be the reason I'm just wearing sweats on planes now. Oh my god! Because I wear jeans. You crazy? I you don't need all that. And, and, and bring a this, bag or like Joe you, says that fucking what are they, fanny map? pack. Fanny pack, you can hide your edible, your money, your yeah. wallet. Everything's in one thing. The, what saves me is a sleep apnea bag. Yeah. I can't give it away because they might break it. So it has a side compartment. Yeah. So that's where my, com- my computer fits perfectly. My iPod. I put When I get on the plane, I don't need my wallet. I got upgraded. Yeah. So I put my wallet in there. My pockets have nothing. You don't need your cell phone. So when I take off, the only thing I have is my iPod. I always start off with the same song, Bush, the the whatever. And then the sound of winter, and then I go over to, and then I go over to Fell on Black Days by Soundgarden. Yeah. And after that, everything mixes in the edible and the Xanax. So, I gotta try taking. A, I want to try taking a. You gotta take an edible with a Xanax to take the edge off. Really? Oh, that's the combo, Bombo. I'm gonna try it. That's the combo, Maybe Bombo. I'll try it tonight. Yeah, sleep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleep good. You need a, you need a ten hours sleep to recover. Drink a protein shake tonight before you go to bed. Yeah, to get your body nourished. Even if you got to go to GNC, tell them give me some protein, just so or go to listen to me. Listen to me, dog. You and Leanne are gonna love this place. This okay. is my favorite place now. You go to NoHo across the street from Lemley Theater. Okay, it's called the Greenhouse Juicery Place. Okay. They have parking in the back. So don't even park. It's tough to get parking on Lancashire. Yeah. Across from the Lemley. So just go around the back on Magnolia and park back there. They have parking for this place. Really? Just go to the greenhouse juicery and get back to me. Okay. That's going to be your world after you work out from now on. The fucking protein shake with the coffee beans. It's epic protein, which is vegan protein. Yeah. They put almond milk. Cocoa beans, a banana, and coconut. So everything is free except the almond milk is a point for a cup. Yeah. And the protein powder is two. They have kombucha on tap. I'm thinking of getting kombucha on tap for the fucking house. I told Rogan to get it. They have ginger. They have orange. They have grape. They have cherry on tap. 12 and 16 ounces. They got fucking smoothies. The, the cocoa berry will knock you the fuck out with a scoop of protein powder. Listen to me. <laughs> I'm 55 years old, dog. You could take your kale and shove it up your mom's asshole. Uncle Joey's got a confession to make on the Burt Kreischer podcast. I've been drinking kale lately. In really? My shakes. Because what, caught, what gets the soreness is pineapple juice. Really? Pineapple juice will really go in there. Pineapple juice, cherry extract. All those things help with soreness, and they have everything there. The other thing, Tura Bean, whatever that's called, they have everything there. So just go in there and get the pineapple, cocoa pineapple. It's coconut pineapple juice, pressed pineapple juice, which is three points for fucking 16 fucking ounces. Yeah. It's got no sugar in it. It's pressed, and get the fucking kale in it. They cut the stems off. That's what gives it the shitty flavor. Dog, I live off those things. So I go to kickboxing. I get out of 10, and I zoom right over there. I get a 12-ounce kombucha. And a fucking, uh, the chocolate one is tremendous. And the vanilla one, the acai. And the fucking bowls, the oatmeal bowls are fucking off the chain. Really? They have one called pitaya fruit, dragon fruit with mango. I'm telling you, you and Leanne go there, you're going to go, Joey, I cannot believe you got Done. hooked on this. Done. Part. $14, $12, who gives a fuck? You're drinking the best. The guy's fucking dynamite guy. Really? But it's next to a hot dog place. So oh, it's, a tough wa- it's a tough walk. It's a you tough know what I'm walk. Saying? It's a That's tough where walk. they lose me, Joey. They got bratwurst. They got hot dogs. <laughs> oh, fuck. They got french fry. You're sitting there going, do I really need this kale shake? Oh. But the fucking, they do a great, like the guy, I said, listen, you guys are going to break me in. I'm old. It's time for me to start drinking these green things. Yeah. That green shit is all, and they'll tell you. Like I, I don't put uh, the the 
the uh, what's a raisin before it becomes a raisin? A date. Grape? A, a date. Yeah. I don't put the dates in that protein shake because the farts are fucking death. It smells like somebody died next to you. When somebody dies next to you, they have that last fart in their ass. Yeah. And when, like, my, I used to I have a friend that, used to, that has a funeral parlor still. So when we were kids, he'd call, like, what are you doing? No, let's go pick up a body. And we'd go pick up bodies. And when you pull them off the fucking slab sometimes onto the fucking autopsy table, I mean, we'd do this the way me and you were having a conversation. Really? Like, I'd go, Bert, what are we doing tonight? What do you think we're doing, dog? <laughs> we're getting a gram of blow. We're getting some bitches. But I got to pick up a body at 730. Take a ride. And I'd take a ride with him, pick up the fucking body. And then we'd go back to the funeral parlor, take the body out of the car. He'd be in a rapper. And one time I remember I was going to see the Jacksons. The Michael Jacksons? The Jacksons in 84. Yeah. They oh, when they went back on tour. They went back on tour for the Victory album. Yes. It was a, my buddy had tickets at uh, Meadowlands. And my buddy goes, I'll drive you, but take a ride with me to pick up a body. I'll never, ever forget that. And uh, you could just pull them off the limo. Yeah. Pull them. And the legs pop out the, the, from the thing that they push them on. Yeah. And he pulled it off. And, the, and I was on the phone. And the body came towards me. And I was on the phone with a girl telling me, yeah, I'll meet you at 6. And the body's on skates, like it's on wheels. Yeah. So it's rolling towards me. And when it hit me, the guy's mouth opened and the last fart came out of his ass. And I can't tell you how bad that room smelt. Oh. They have that one last gastric fucking air that comes out of their ass. It's been inside a dead person. Yeah, for like maybe six or seven hours. He must have died like that morning. It was fucking horrific. That shit sunk into your clothes. Oh my! And then we used to lift weights down there, so we could smell the fucking <laughs> the the shit that they embalm you with embalming fluid. Yeah, you dip a joint in embalming fluid, and you let it dry, and then you smoke that fucking captain. See you tomorrow, dog. I did that a few times. You get embalm, you get a joint of weed, you dip the, half of it in embalming fluid, and let that thing sit for two days. Oh. When you smoke that formaldehyde. <laughs> for real? Oh. Shut the fuck up. I would be high up. for 12 hours, dog. Gumby dust. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Holy fuck. Fucking smoking formaldehyde. You have no idea. You could sell those joints for $100 a fucking joint now today. Oh, I a, bet. A good, a good reefer with dipped in formaldehyde. People lose their minds on that shit. Oh, my God. And nobody God. does it no more. Nobody remembers. That shit was big when I was is that called? Is that what they called getting wet? No, that's what they call seeing the devil and fucking <laughs> enjoying it. <laughs> I used to smoke that when I was like 18, 19, and then I used to go to the city. And in those days, wherever the weed spot was, they also sold trays, $3 bags of like angel dust, but they always had a name for it. Yeah. It was called THC Crystal when I was growing up. THC crystal? Yeah, that's what you called it to calm people down because you didn't want to. Because you couldn't say PCP yeah, or elephant it was, tranquilizer. It was, it was the elephant tranquilizer. Yeah. And you would sprinkle it. A $3 bag was enough for a pin joint, but you couldn't smoke it by itself because it won't burn. So you have to put it in reefer. I still remember smoking that shit at 10 in the morning and being fucking high at 9 o'clock at night on a bus. And going, what the fuck did I smoke today? That I've been high for fucking twelve hours. Really? I mean, then we used to snort that shit. Fucking ain't uh, because again they would cut it with like coke up uh, cut. Yeah. And they, in those days, they told you that they they boiled the stems from the weed and then they scraped the sides, and that's what you snort. That was bullshit. They that boiled the stems from weed, and whatever sticks to the side of the pot. You scrape that, you freeze that, yeah, and you put it into a powder, and you snort that, and you get high. But that was a lie. We were snorting pure fucking gorilla biscuits. You know? <laughs> we were snorting fucking animal tranquilizers. Somebody's cat died alive. You know what I'm saying? Like oh. some, somebody's cat had surged you around him while he was fucking alive. We used to be. We used to do uh, put toothpaste on a cigarette. Call it a jailhouse joint. What does it do to you? Uh, I mean, I in all honesty, I don't. Not a lot. Like, I, I mean, I, I don't remember it really, but like enough. Like, uh, you get a, a head buzz. We used to do Glade, where you wrap a, your towel around a thing of Glade, and then you inhale the the stuff inside the Glade. But the towel is stopping the the aerosol. Yeah, so you're just getting the whatever 
the insides of the glade is that was what we did we did that a lot growing up that'll fuck your world though yeah i wish i hadn't done it as much as i did it like i think about that sometimes <sighs> i'm like that'll catch up to me oh my god i think of that like now i'm scared like sometimes i'm like what the fuck did I do to what I put in my body when I was Do you young? ever think like that? Like, I think... Oh, when, yeah. Oh, when Ralphie yeah. died... Now, obviously, Ralphie was really big. But then I go, like... Or, like, when you see someone healthy die, and you're like, I can't believe they died. And you're like, what... All the shit I've done. All the dangerous shit I've done. Just fucking jumping off buildings and skydiving and riding motorcycles and scuba diving and fighting, fighting bears and taming lions and, like, all the shit swimming with sharks... When I look at me being alive and then like my sister had this friend who was born on the same day I was. She was my sister's age. She was like two years younger than me. She's been dead for 12 years. She had a brain tumor. Just died. And then you go like, fuck, why did she never did a thing? Never even drank. You know? It's weird. It's weird. Especially as you get older, you get a little scared. You're like, I did this. I smoked those years. That's why I take it so seriously now. Like, yeah. You know, I get mad at my agents. I really enforce the the one, uh, every other week rule. I mean, I gave them my dates this year. Yeah. If you don't book those dates, you ain't booking nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm not working back to back no more. I'm not getting stressed out. I'm not doing that shit. You know, there's a way that I don't want to end up like Richard Jenny. I don't want to end up like Ralphie where, you know, this is really cute what we have going on right now. And the result is some money and stuff like that. I I never want to go on the road because I have to. That's never going to happen in my life. Yeah. I, that's a horrible feeling. I want to do comedy because I want to. Because I want to go out there and make people laugh and have a good time. When I work two weeks back to back or three weeks back to back, that third week, they're not getting their money's worth. Yeah. They're getting a robot that doesn't want to be there. Why would I put them through that? You have to be honest with yourself. At one point, as a comic, it's like I told you, once you shoot your special, forget about comedy for two. You don't want to listen to me. That's fine. No, no, no. Forget did, about comedy for two months. I did months. that. I, I, no, no, no. Not even second. Like, done. You're done. Yeah. You're done for a month. You're done. I mean, not even look at stand up. Yeah. Like, you just do your podcast and focus on your working out because go, that X, that, you just finished working your ass off for two months every fucking day in training, trying to look good because part of the special is looking good and being yeah. healthy. And now they're putting you back out there mm -mm. with the same material. You're working a new shit. You're paranoid they heard it. No. Yeah. Done. Kabish. Bye. I'll make it up later. Yeah. I'll make it up later. This will be made up. It's not. We're not going nowhere. Yeah. Look, 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 well, Philadelphia <laughs> put an offer for you. Well, Philadelphia has been there since 1776, and they'll be there in 2019. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't understand. I saw Richard Jenny take his life. <laughs> I've seen people that have been put on the road for no reason, that they've burnt them out themselves, the agents. They weren't prepared for that. There were 20 people who won Last Comic Standing were not prepared for that beating. Oh, no. You know, when Ralphie won Last Comic Standing, he was already leveling rooms. That's what people do not understand. That oh. was the difference. Ralphie was a hocus-pocus trick. That fan beat him because they wanted an Asian or whatever. I'm not taking nothing away from that fan. Yeah. But Ralphie was a seasoned headliner that was still headlining up to six months ago. Still headlining. You know what I'm saying? Up until he died. So... Did he show the night before he died, did he? Had, yeah, the night he died. This has to be something that we do not to kill us. I don't want to be Bobby Slayton where I have to go on the road because I have a home in Coldwater Canyon and I have to impress the crashers. I don't give a fuck about the crashers. <laughs> yeah. I really don't. Yeah. I really don't. I'm doing this in the healthiest way that I can, that I could be good on the podcast. I could get great guests. I could still go on the road and be solid. I don't yeah. Yeah. Well, then If we don't book this trap, then we don't book it. Yeah. Then we don't book it. It's not on the schedule. Look at the dates. If you don't get those dates, it's not going to work. It's every other week. Let me stay at home, raise my daughter for a week, and then let me go on a Thursday. Let me focus on the... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I've, I've, that week that you're home, you focus on your health. I was two weeks. I did the special. I took three weeks off. I did this last this weekend. I did a gig in Grand Rapids, but it was one it was night, one night, Friday at a theater, night. yeah, and or a church that was that is, that's technically a theater. And they came home, and then you know, when I was thinking about this, for me, it's not as much about doing the road, but like I don't want to feel like I have to do spots in the city if I don't feel like doing spots. You see in Kevin the city. Hart at the store? No. 
Answer. Right. That's it. Yeah. That's your answer. That's the most money making million fucking comic out there. Yeah. You see Gabriel at the store fighting with sharks? Nope. You need to rest. Yeah. I come home. You and need I go, to rest. I need I, to live a life. I need two I need one night at the store a week. Yeah. I'll go to the fourth wall the other night and do an open mic and I'll catch flappers on a Tuesday night. It's still a set. I look back to when you were getting ready to do your last special and we were going out every, every night. You it have was, to. But it was fun. Like we'd go to do flappers, the ha ha, dark black horse. Yeah, you have to do that before a special. Yeah. I'm in training. For I did fight. that going up. I did that building up to my last I'm special. I'm fighting June 9th. Yeah. I was at the I'm store. 12 weeks out. Two nights a week uh, doing improv. And then on the road every weekend. And then the w times I wasn't at the store, I was adding Wednesday and Tuesday shows on the road. Because for me, at, at one point, I was like, I got to do the hour. I got to do the full hour. I got to work the hour. Because it's the pacing of the hours. What's when you're home, you call it. Listen, yeah. this, this is the secret next time. Netflix gives me a half hour. I'm going to go crazy for six weeks. It's a half hour. Yeah. I'm going to give them everything I got for six weeks. I'm going to shoot an embedded series every week. Mm -hmm. So when the special gets released on YouTube, six weeks before, they're going to show me at the fourth wall, flappers, talking to you, yeah. talking to Joe, going to jiu-jitsu, the kid, just to let you know inside my life before the special comes out. Yeah. Once I shoot that special, wherever they shoot it, you won't see me for a month doing stand-up. Yeah. I'm not wasting my time no more. Yeah. I will take the Ice House. as a. There's a new theater that opened up in downtown LA, the Mayfair Theater. You could get a residence there. They're giving them away. Really? One night a week. Go there at five dollars at the door. A hundred people. For eight weeks you run a residence. That's it, Leanne. I'm staying home. I'm oh. picking up a hundred and two to hundred dollars on Tuesdays. That would be And I'm doing a residence. Great. You tape it, you go home, you could get your buddy here, Johnny Music, to <laughs> come down with a camera and tape you. You watch the tape and you get more than you would if you went out just for the money. <laughs> Easy. And then you go out four weeks in a row, get your timing back. And then every other week yeah. until the special gets released. And then you do the Thursday and the Saturday and you add the Wednesday show. But they just put me out there to spin my wheels anymore. Fucking crazy. I'm too old. It's too much. It's too much. You don't know what. Well, they want you back. Yeah, so I want herpes. I can't get it. What are you going to do? <laughs> so what they want you. I don't know. But listen, I got to do that because I got a daughter. I got my health. I got a podcast. I remember when I went on the week. I'll never forget this. I still have the numbers. You come over. We still have them. I went on the road for eight weeks straight. The podcast numbers dropped so fucking bad after week four. Really? Yeah, because who could focus? Yeah, because you, you're, you're so good about that. Like, you're so good about that, about making sure you have time for the podcast. You. This is our bread and butter. People want to hear this conversation every yeah. week. This is part of their whatever. You told them you're going to deliver on Monday and Wednesday. They watch on Monday and Wednesday. The first couple of Wednesdays you start missing, they start listening to Ari. Yeah. And you got to be attentive for your podcast. You have to be fresh. You know what, man? If you don't want to go out on Tuesday night, don't go out on Tuesday night. I fucking hate calling in for spots. You know why? Why? Because I don't know what I'm going to feel like doing on Saturday and Friday. Oh, I... So Friday and Saturday, I don't touch spots. Yeah. When I'm in town, I do comedy. You want to go to the fourth wall? Five minutes. Where's the fourth wall? Burbank. and You just get on Colfax, shoot the Burbank, park, give the guy $5. You do five minutes, and you watch young comics, and you look at their eyes, and look at what they want. They want what you got. They want oh. to be where you are now. And once you look at that again, you get reminded of what you want. But to just keep going out every week. It's just, not because why? Right, they're going to give me 90% of the door. Yeah. Who cares? They're going to give me 90% of the door next week. Go to the fourth wall. Do the five minutes. You want to do 15 on Saturdays? $15, I let you do 15 minutes. And you can just try out the verbiage. Really? Yeah, and if you kill in front of open micers, you could kill anywhere. Yeah. But you get to go back to the slums. You get to go back to, remember when, when there was one of the Rockies where he went with the black guy and the black guy took him to East L.A. to train. He goes, what's this? Oh. He goes, so you can look at their eyes. They want what you got. They want what you got. I wanted to get back there. That's, That's brilliant. Why I took those three weeks off in December. I didn't look at specials. I didn't talk to comedians. I don't want to hear it. We never had the opportunity to do that. That's so interesting but, because you do you go to the store and you hang out with people that are at your level in a weird way. You don't see the you don't see 
the look in their eyes like I want what you got. No, they go up there to try out new <laughs> things. Everybody's cute. Everybody's got a hat on, a goatee. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's great that we have the opportunity to still go to the store and the improv and the laugh factory. But years ago, I would get invited to do Mexican rooms. Really? They bring you back to reality. You go into fucking East L.A. on a Tuesday, and you can't. The, sh- the show's supposed to start at 9, but guess what? There's a Laker game. So it starts at 9.45 now. Uh-huh. So now they're more drunker. I would always keep myself in the cellar from time to time. It's too easy to go to the store and the laugh factory and the improv now. Yeah. I, st- I still ate a bag of dicks out of there at the improv. Hilarious. Did you really? I still, yeah. They're scared of me. The Wait, improv. where were you at? Were you at the lab? At the, no, I did the big room for Greg. Oh, Fitzsimmons. Fitzsimmons. Oh, yeah, you guys did the, yeah, uh, yeah, St. the Patty's St. Patty's Day, Day show. And Who was it, you, him? Me and Nick Swanson. And it's funny how I'm a comedy store guy. Yeah. I love the improv, and I love what they give me work. I really do love the improvs. I love the improv. And I love going I to the Laugh Factory. But, you know, the, the, the comedy store is our home, but... When they bring up Burt Kreischer, three quarters of the people know you. What good is that? Yeah. I'd rather go to Flappers one night when nobody knows you and try your fucking pussy eating material then <laughs> and watch their faces in Disneyville. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, or I'd rather do that. I wanted to go back right after fucking New Year's Day. Like New Year's Day, I went to the fourth wall. I got to check out the fourth wall. And dog, I was as intimidated as I was the first time I went to an open mic. Really? Even though I had headline podcasts, and it's intimidating because you're in a pool of sharks of people that had the same dream you had 20 years ago. You got what they want, and you look at that on stage, and you go, "When everybody I've taken there has said the same thing to me, I gotta go home, man. I gotta write because you get so inspired." Yeah. from seeing these young kids go up and you're like, how come he's not taking that joke in this direction? So now you're looking at comedy from a different direction. You're looking at it as a coach now. You're a coach. You're sitting there going, ooh, I would say this right now. Oh, that's a good fucking premise. Yeah. If I was a joke thief, I'd steal that. You see some great shit. Yeah. You see some great shit, but you go, everybody I've taken there, Steve Simone, any comic I've taken there, at the end they're like, I gotta go home, man. That was too much. I took yeah. Felicia there. She's like, Joey, that place is a gem. Oh, my God. My heart was the beating. fourth fucking wall. It's 7-Eleven. Yeah, you, I know 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, the, the Russian dry cleaner. Yeah. Right in there. Are you serious? Park right in there. Go to the last thing next to that fucking the, the sushi, the Mexican sushi yeah. place. Right in the end. <laughs> the glass is dirty. When you go in there, you can smell the flu. The good thing is you pay the $5, and you have to watch everybody. They, they don't let you leave. So it teaches you patience, and it gets you that regular camaraderie back. You're not talking to Joey Diaz because he's Joey Diaz. You're not talking to Joe Rogan because he's Joe Rogan. Yeah. You're talking to open micers, and they really want to hear your knowledge. I don't go on stage and coach. I just go up there and do material. Yeah. I don't give nobody advice there. I'm no fucking Zig Ziglar. I just go there to do comedy <laughs> and to see the look in their eyes during the week. Because now when I go on the road, I think about them. And it makes me rip fucking room apart because that's what they want, these fucking kids. So you what you do, you just go up any night and just give them five bucks? Yeah, just go five. Lee does it two times a night. Really? So now, more, bro, when I talked about it on Rogan going to the fourth wall, they went from doing two shows a night to they even have a, they added a 10 o'clock show. Really? So tonight, you're bored. Yeah. Your girls go to sleep at nine, quarter to nine, you go, fuck it. Get in your car. They don't sell booze there. You shoot right up Burbank, you park, you walk in at nine, you give Joe five dollars, and you get on stage. Shit. And he'll put you on where you want, but don't leave. Yeah, stick around. Stick around and watch the young comics. I was thinking of calling Jack Jr. and saying, Hey man, I just got done my special on a right, but I don't I don't like I, we talked about this one time, but right at the store, the store is so fucking sold out every time you go there that it's hard to go, here we go, I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm not going to do anything that works, and I'm going to take all the stuff that I'm that I have, do not know if it works yet, and do it in my one fucking spot in the main room. I did. I did the other night. I went up. I was. I done. Uh, I was getting ready to shoot the special, and I had one story that wasn't like it was working on the road, but I didn't know if it would work. And I took it up into the main room, and I did. I just did the story. One story. Ten minutes. One story, and it fucking teetered. And I went, oh fuck. And then you're like. You're following, 
Joe and Delia and Segura. So Tuesday night it was Sebastian Delia, Rogan, Natasha Leggero, the Roast Master General, and then yeah. I had to follow that. And I that I did better in the original room. I ate a bag of dicks in Sam's room. <laughs> I went in there. I just scared them to death. And then, down, and then I went down there Thursday night. It was the same schedule pretty much. Yeah. And before I went up, they tapped me on the show, and they go, you're bringing up Martin Lawrence. What? And I go, $15. These people saw Sebastian, Chris, Natasha, and Martin Lawrence. Holy shit. Whatever it costs to get in there, 20 bucks, whatever the fuck it is. So I've been getting overwhelmed, like I told you, man. Like I'm 55. I'm still getting spots at the fucking store. Like, how fucking lucky am I? Yeah, like they're chasing those old. They chased those old guys. I, Adam called them all and said, "This ain't for you." Yeah, no but more. age never really called on to you. I don't think like people look at people who get older. But you, for some reason, you're you are you are like a wine. The older you get, the oh, better you get. Like you're not like I look at some of those people where you go, you go, oh, he got to like fifty, and no one wants to hear what he wants to talk about anymore because he was a young guy. He sold himself as a young guy. You know, like those guys that sold themselves, I'm valuable because I'm 35 and I'm hot right now. I got heat. When they get older, people are like, yeah, I don't, I don't relate to what you talk about. But when I, and I think I'm a little bit like this, although I, you know, but like, I think me and you came out of this, we kind of popped in the podcasting world because of the lives we'd lived and people look at that and go, oh, like we're not selling, we're not branding ourselves as young, hot, valuable movie stars. We're like just comics who live crazy fucking lives and talk about them. And I think, I, I can say this definitely for you. I don't know if I'm as much as that, but for some reason, I don't think, I don't think anyone will ever care. Like Ron White, no one cares how fucking his age is. No. They don't give brilliant. a fuck. They go, just get on stage. You're fucking be hilarious. funny, yeah. yeah. Stan Hope, no one gives a fuck about Stan Hope's age. I don't even know what his stage is. He's got to be getting up there. Yeah. Got to be 50. 48, 50. But I don't think, like, I think that's the flaw that some guys get is they they brand themselves as young. Like, I think Dane got that a little bit. Like, Dane was this, like, young college comic wherever all the college kids wanted to see him. And then when he got older and wanted to talk about new stuff, they were like, well, what happened to the finger fucking pussy popping or whatever, you know? Like, and he had a hard time kind of maturing into being a grown up, you know? It's a tough fucking journey. Speaking of grown-ups, I gotta go pick up my daughter. All right, awesome, Joey. I love Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. I'm I love be you. In man. Albuquerque, the fifth and the sixth. The sixth is already sold out. Tickets are just available for Thursday night. Where are you going in Albuquerque? Uh, the Santa Ana Casino. Fuck. Thursday. Have you been there? No, but I would love to go there. Thursday, Friday. One show Thursday. Both shows Friday are pretty sold out. And then I got Columbus for four twenty. I got an easy month. You're in Columbus for 420? Yeah. I got That's going to be month. a fucking show. Yeah, I'm show. being edible on stage. People are going to be passing out. You know how we do it. Fuck Dude, it. well, I'll tell you. Let me tell you right now. I don't do Sunday shows. I do, although I'm doing, I just added a sun, two Sunday shows in Sacramento this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have two shows. Uh, second one, still got some tickets left. Everything else sold out. But I'm, I'm going to sweatpants. I'm taking a Xanax with an edible. And let me tell you, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, Joey. You know how much I love you, but you calling me today congratulating me oh, and saying you wanted to talk about this. Yeah, I'm proud Dude, of you. I'm if, proud of you. This is there's big. a handful of people that called to tell me no, congratulations. This is big. This is big. You did it. Which is part of the fucking deal is doing it. Yeah. You know, nobody else did it. You set an example for everybody, so I'm proud of you. Thank you for having me. I love you, Joey. Thank you, man. Love you. This episode was brought to you by The Machine.